Hey, this is Jared Cochran with Family Church. Welcome to our podcast. I'm excited that you're here. I hope that God moves through this message to reach you so he can move through your life. Be sure to share and subscribe so that we can reach the world with God's word. Enjoy the message. Welcome back. Another, uh, oh, I forgot it. Another this is a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday. Wednesday here in the neighborhood. Yeah. Since he's all stoved up, I'll be the primary talker there tonight. You so you re-preach my message. <laughs> uh, I don't so have an hour and a half. Before we get going, two <laughs> things. Let us know where you're watching from. Uh, after you say a prayer for me, because I feel like absolutely terrible. He started a series on commitment, and I'm committed to. And I'm committed it. to getting I'm not this done. Stopping. Come uh, on. I'll bring a, a chair and sit down up here. Hey, listen, with the numbers of miracles that we've been having lately, you're just next. I hope. You're not, Connie. Well, not we're, me. There's other we're people We're telling Connie Starr's story. <laughs> the one thing after another with this lady, Connie, if you happen to be out there or if you see this later, so honored about your story, man. So excited about what God's doing in your life. And other people that we keep hearing little things about, uh, this is a season of miracles. Uh, yeah, I wanted to make sure I brought that up Sunday. Uh, Shout out to my wife on Facebook. I, but I did, I wanted to make sure to bring up Connie's story. Yep. Um, I think it's important, not just sharing a testimony, but letting people know God still does miracles. Absolutely. Uh, cessationism is stupid. We're watching uh, it happen. So, yeah, it, it still happens. God's still moving. Things are still happening. Amen. Uh, I, I'm, I'm glad to be a part of it, but... Uh, let us know where you're watching from. You do the announcements. Let's go. Let us know where you're watching from, what you're having for dinner. While we're talking about miracles, one of them happened again this week. We were all set and scheduled for closing on our land on September the 23rd, and God has worked one more miracle uh, in, our, in our financing, and I can't tell you what it was or what it is, but we will. It's a good thing. God is at work, and it, it just is a blessing to us. So, the announcements. If you're watching this live tonight on Wednesday night, uh, Dining with Dignity is going to happen tomorrow night, Thursday night, 5.30 to about 7 o'clock at uh, Granada Street downtown. If you have never been there to serve there, you want to go. If you do serve there, thank you so much. They give the homeless folks there uh, Dining with Dignity. They give them a nice hot meal for the night, and then they give them a uh, bag lunch for tomorrow so that they will have stuff to eat. They, they are usually our 4S ministry is there with clothes and so many other things that they get. What a blessing it is. So if you're looking for a place to serve, there you go. It is small group season. So small groups are ready to go. If you are looking for a ladies Bible study at night, Kathy's study starts out. They're having their first meeting on September the 10th. That is a Tuesday night. That, that is going to be an interest meeting. They're going to just get together, say hello, introduce one another. And then two weeks after that, that's when the study is going to start, so don't miss it. A lot, of, a lot of smiles and love going up there. Don't miss that. It's going to be good. Two days after that, the Women's Fellowship, September the 12th. That's the once-a-month fellowship that uh, is done by Lauren Dennison and her group. That is going to start up on Thursday night, <coughs> starting at 6.30. That's just for ladies that want to come out and fellowship. They usually have a guest speaker and some food there. So small group season is going every Saturday at Panera Bread. Mark Lebrecht has his men's group. I don't want everyone to forget that coming up in September 15th, we're going to have a potluck Sunday here. Y'all like food? You like dinner on the ground? Let's go. Dinner on the ground? Uh, well, we eat it out of pans and plates, but we call it on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have a potluck day, so wow. we want you to prepare your, <laughs> your favorite potluck, your favorite dish, whatever that is, a casserole, a fried chicken, whatever you would, bring it to church with you, and then after church, we're going to have an old-fashioned, just sit around, have some fellowship and eat like a community does, like a family does, and on that day, we're going to be commemorating uh, Jared's first year in ministry preaching. It's going to be fantastic. That That's night, wild. the youth group, which meets now every Sunday night at six o'clock is going to have their ultimate frisbee night there's a new visitors class for those of you that are new to us that is coming up in september that is going to be held on the 22nd there's a family board night and fun night that's going on there is a lot I, uh, september lot. is like oh boy yeah so, and all of these are on our website familychurch.social slash check events. it out uh i would just go there because there's so there's so much going on uh, and none of that, it, none of it is smoke and mirrors. None of it. It's all real stuff. Right? Like smoke is just, it's not good for you. Here we go. Tonight we're going to be breaking down the sermon from Sunday. <laughs> <Try>. Relapse. <laughs> I like the title. 
Yeah, I, I got, got I got the, the next title. R one. You asked me uh, a couple of days ago the next R word, and I said I wasn't sure, but I've got it for this Sunday. Hold on to it. Relapse no. speaks to such a thing of falling falling back, going back into where it was that you got out of in the first place. Yep, having having the setback because as I opened it up and um, just for the family room, I got like uh, still nowhere. <laughs> Where I wanted to go. So this week, we'll kind of wrap up the second half of chapter 18 uh, on Sunday. But just talking about how Jehoshaphat was blessed, Mm -hmm. but he ends up compromising. He gets into the uh, alliance with someone that he shouldn't be with, Mm -hmm. obviously. You know, like the unequally yoked kind of thing. And I think it's just something that really people need to (coughs) heed more um, attention to. Yes. Because... Actually, it's funny. I saw I saw a reel earlier, and uh, it was about Jesus and how. Uh, and wait, it's it's hard when I see stuff because, like, if I don't think that way, I'm like, how <laughs> how are people this dumb to think this way? Mm-hmm. And I don't want to sound condescending, but it's like you hear just something so off the wall that you're like, how how does anyone believe that? Oh, so yeah, <clears throat> they were talking about how. Um, I guess apparently some people believe like him sitting with the sinners and eating with them Come on. was him accepting their sin and tolerating their sin and that he wasn't uh, talking to them about their sin or anything like that. It's like, that, where do you get that from? And, you know, like the thing we saw that uh, the one guy was commenting on that one Facebook group, group to me and he was saying, oh, Jesus, you know, the Jesus of the world never said anything negative. Never it's said like, anything have you negative. even read the Bible? Right. Like, yes, he did. Yes, he it's did. It's pretty obvious. Like, you, you get to, you, you pick, follow him or, whoops, on the other side of eternity. And it's not going to be fun. But it was just the thing I wanted to dial in on with relapse, mm-hmm. falling back into your own ways because... Uh, everybody, I don't want to say everybody, but we, it is hard that you get that life change. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that was the thing I said about like the, the feelings of revival. Do you still have the faith of revival? Cause it's easy. Like when things are moving and God's presence is like just saturated the room, it's, it's easy to, it sounds weird, but it's almost like easy to get stirred up and then make a decision and you think everything's going to be great. And then as soon as you leave the building, like, and, and I'll use Kelsey as an example, she said Sunday, as soon as she left, she just like felt instantly just like mental, just like oppression and depression. Mm-hmm. And it was like the, just the attack right back mm-hmm. on you because you're not in, you know, you're not, not that God is confined to the building, but right. obviously there's something powerful about the believers the coming together. of his presence. And it's, yeah, just a big... <laughs> concentration and you know it's just it, it, it's easy to slip into that mindset of like okay yeah I'm a Christian so everything's supposed to be good now and then it's not and then what happens do you kind of you know like a, like Jehoshaphat you get a little bit of blessing you get a little bit of deliverance a, a, new, a new car finances your bills get paid or something then you're like oh, okay and then you just kind of start mm-hmm. slowly slipping back and compromising and that was just the importance of you know not letting stuff get you mm-hmm. stagnant I've seen it over the years so many times that uh, that very thing I've seen revival in the room. I've seen people get excited about it, and then they, before long, they just drift right back into their their habits and their ways. I've also seen people that have made decisions. We are a, we are a creature that are prone towards relapse. The dog returns to his own vomit. That we forget how bad that was when we get out of it, and then for some reason we we opine with nostalgia about it and kind of lean back to it. And step back in that very same hole, and the next thing you know, you're back in that same mess. I've seen it so many times. We are a creature that are prone to... That's why that title really spoke to me, Relapse, because we are prone to that. And it takes a whole lot to get away from it. One of the things that I see is that when you come out of something like that, and this is just for Christian faith currently, not, not from the past, but currently. If you don't become a servant... If you don't become a student, if you don't become a disciple, for here is another way of putting it, if you don't put your hand on a plow yeah. and plug yeah. in and find a way to, to get involved and serve and become a part of that what's going on, you will at some point fall back in. If you just come to church and sit and listen to good preaching, after a while good preaching is, is not going to be enough for you. You're going to relapse. You're going to go right back into where you were. So I don't know. It makes me think That's of, what it spoke to me. It makes me think of the the armor of God mm-hmm. that 
It's like we think we can just put it on, and then it's, you know, like it doesn't require, I hesitate to say the word maintenance, mm -hmm. but, you know, it's like we just put it on, but then we don't do anything to, you know, maybe it's strong at first. Your faith is strong, like you were saying earlier, like the, that zero to five year crowd, because mm -hmm. they're, they're on fire, they're pushing, they want to learn, and... And not to go too far off on like a different shoot, but I think that's something the church as a whole really needs to realize. Like we, we've got to disciple these people, yes. teach these people because that first, those first few years of their Christian faith and their walk, they don't know any better. I mean, it's like a, like a, like a child. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I read, and this isn't, it's a secular book and it was just like some fiction novel about some assassin, but they got the assassin as a kid and they just teach him mm -hmm. how to lie on purpose. Mm -hmm. And then as he's, he ends up like getting out of it and he like helps random people, like helps save them, kind of like the equalizer type thing. But his thing was he was just, you know, lying about something to get out of whatever situation and help out this lady. And I think she was asking like, how do you do that? And he's like, because I wasn't told that lying is wrong. Like I was raised to believe that lying is not wrong. So it's easier. Mm -hmm. That's why you don't have, that's why he didn't have like that, that, uh, like a lie detector test where your heart rate increases and your, mm -hmm. your breathing changes. And I think that's just important for Christians that are new to the faith that they get plugged into, mm -hmm. um, get plugged into to a spiritually Something. sound, healthy church. There is no mm -hmm. perfect church. Small groups. <laughs> Small groups especially. And, and that's why I harp so much on like not just coming in here on Sunday and then doing nothing for the rest of the week because uh, you don't do that with eating. Mm -hmm. But somehow when it comes to Jesus and, and getting fed on Sunday, we just, you know, we, we take a little bit of like ramen noodle soup and then the rest of the week, we just want that to sustain us. And we wonder why things come against us so easily and we, we, we sin and we fall short and we crumble so easy and stumble in our faith so easy mm -hmm. simply because we're just, we're not staying deeply devoted and rooted in the word. And, and that's just the big thing with with young believers is getting them plugged in yep. so they're not getting, because now... I mean, as great as technology is and social media, and like I'm trying to bring to light <coughs> the abundance of just false prophets and just bad teaching and bad theology and false doctrine. Just, I mean, you can go on TikTok and you find all kinds of stuff. And it's like, if you don't know any better, you can be easily swayed by this mm -hmm. person. And then, you know, who's, who's to say what happens from that? I think that's one of the most powerful words that's floating around in our lexicon right now in this church is discipleship. We've, we're, we're hearing it over and over again. We've got to disciple people. They've got to become a disciple. For you to, that may not know, a disciple is a learner, a student, or a pupil. We have got to approach it like that. It's very studiously, <coughs> we've got to get involved in the, in the Word. You know what I've started doing? I, I, this is a testimony for the uh, Bible app that we have. What it, was that? Um, re, true version or re, you version? I turn it on now when I get in my car. And just let it play. And just let it read to me. And I'm riding down the road, and I was listening to the book of Jude, because you were talking about wanting to do a series on Jude, and I listened to it in a completely different translation, and I was thinking, man, this is good, because yeah. you're feeding your soul, and you're hearing the word, and it's just, it changed my whole day. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word It changed my whole God. day. So if you've got that in your phone... Put it on your car, and when you're driving somewhere, just instead of listening to music all the time, yeah. which I like to, put on some scripture and just let that word roll in and get right inside of it. <clears throat> That's like with the gym. Uh, I um, I don't listen to music as much mm -hmm. in uh, in the gym anymore. I, I usually I'm listening to a sermon or something, just getting extra, yeah. just getting fed extra. <laughs> I'm and not to that level yet. No? No. <laughs> well, you got to find, I mean, you got to, it's got to be, and I'm not like trying to talk down on any pastors. I don't know who you listen to, but like, if they're not just like, you know, the energy mm -hmm. and you've got that just like, I don't know, it's just that First level school. where you're just like, yes. Who are you listening to? First I listen school. to Philip Anthony Mitchell from 2819. Atlanta. Uh, he's in Atlanta. I want to go visit. Maybe when I finish this series, you could take a Sunday and I'll shoot up there. You can take two Sundays. Uh, <laughs> Let me get back uh, to work. But I, I want to go up there. And then obviously I listen to Stephen Furtick a lot. Um, that's like my two favorites and go-to kind of things. I like Driscoll. Uh, I've, yeah, I've gotten back to listening to... I always end up forgetting about him somehow because there's just so many... Yeah, he's I've, so forgettable. Oh No, it's not that he's forgettable. It's just this other guy 
the Philip Anthony Mitchell, because we've all got those people that at a season of your life, yeah, they're there to speak in. They they feed you, <coughs> and there's just something about like the way that Stephen Furtick preaches. It's kind of how my brain works, so mm-hmm. I can follow that and all that, and then the other side mm-hmm. with Pastor uh, Philip from 2819. He's like so passionate and just like mm-hmm. like I'm raw. trying to be just raw and real and bold and it's like man that's that's what I love. Who do y'all listen to? If y'all don't mind, <coughs> maybe share that in the comments, both Facebook and on YouTube. Who you listen to? And maybe somebody will find somebody that they they like and it'll be the next step for them. So yeah, I'm all about. Uh, I've said it before, collaboration, not competition. We yep. should be, we're, we're supposed to all be on the same team trying to reach people. But So what was the motivation for this sermon? Uh, well, I mean, it all just birthed out of, like I said last week, jumping um, into Second Chronicles 20, which is where we will end up. Mm-hmm. And the first, the first verse after this, okay, well, what happened before this that led up to it? Or you could, just, you know, because I was like, I could preach this, but... I, I, something in me was like, I want to, I want to go back and lead it up because I think starting back and you see kind of that life of Jehoshaphat and everything mm-hmm. the way that it did, <clears throat> the everything the way that everything happened the way that it did. When we get to twenty, it'll make so much more sense and it'll be uh, man, it'll be so much just stronger and real and raw and uh, there's just something about I mean because. It's easy to just jump into a story, Mm -hmm. but if you don't learn the context, Mm -hmm. that story doesn't have as much meaning to you. And then it's like when you start going backwards and seeing what led up to it and then diving into all of that individually, it's, I mean, that's studying the Bible and it's You pressed in on the fact that he made the wrong alliances. Yeah. Um, And boy, that is a a bell that rings for a lot of us, maybe you as well. the right and the wrong alliances make so much of a difference in your life. You can have the right alliance when you align yourself with someone. And that, like that, the preachers you listen to, the books you read, the, the sermons that you ingest, they can change everything about that. They can change for your mentality into something else. But then if you align yourself with the wrong people, you can be in the, uh, the best season of your life and line yourself up with the wrong people and destroy everything that was building and everything that was going to happen. You have to re-go back and restart over. That's what amazed me is that Jehoshaphat was doing so well. And then he went right back to these disconnections and, and these places that he should have never been, went back to the wrong alliances. So keep your path right. Keep your feet on the right path. Make the right connections. Joe Costello says, Vody Bauckham. Yeah, Vody's Jerry good. Strom's listening to a young man named Jared Cocker. <laughs> wow, he's, I gotta look him up. I'm gonna have to and see I like, I like, I, I listen to the Bible app too, but yep. the only gripe <coughs> that I have with it, uh, I hate listening to it on one time speed. I have to listen to it at like 1.5 or 1.75, so it's fast it's faster because of just the way that I think. And uh, unfortunately, my radio in my truck won't let you do that, so <laughs> it's kind of frustrating. So sometimes I have to put headphones on and drive, Even but for yeah, uh, for Dick. <laughs> but yeah, um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, yeah, I, I love listening to it too. It's actually how I'll do um, some of my daily reading because mm-hmm. I'm doing the Bible in the one year thing chronologically, and a lot of times I'll just listen to it. Mm-hmm. Um, as I'm like, I'll have it, because it's tempting to turn it on and not pay any attention to it. It's just background noise. Mm-hmm. But to sit there and then just, because I'll read fast, but if I'll slow it down and then stare at it as someone else is reading it, just get, you know, extra, I don't know, extra layers mm-hmm. kind of thing. But What was your favorite, um, was there a favorite quote that you that really spoke to you in your own sermon? Was there um, just stepped out, jumped out? I just stepped out. These last two weeks, especially th- the first week, um, I don't, I don't know how to even describe it. I mean, it's like I just write some stuff down and... Show the screen. That's the, and, uh, these, are your, so, these are his notes. Yeah, these are my notes. And then you see my sticky notes. I didn't really look at this. We didn't even get to the back of this page, so that'll be this week. <laughs> but I wrote two or three full pages like this, mm-hmm. and I was like, this is, this is way too much. Mm-hmm. So I ended up going with this, which was uh, just like launching points almost. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I had, you know, we get stuff and just stop. We, we say content, but not are complacent. Uh, and I have the definitions because how I harped in on contentment, uh, feeling joy and peace in the current situation while still striving for improvement. 
and then complacency, which is where you're just satisfied mm-hmm. you're not doing anything. And that kind of like draw things out and I, you know, end up glancing at them almost. Mm-hmm. Um, you're finding what works for you. Yeah, I'm you're, definitely. You're everything's working. getting. It took you a year. <coughs> it took you a year into the whole process to settle on this. Yeah. Well, everything. I mean, I've. You've seen it. I've talked to you about it. Where I've looked up because it's not like a regular job. Where hey, I want to learn this. Okay, here is this person to train you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't even know how you would get a hold of you a mentor. You put the red wire to the white wire and the black wire. Yeah, I mean, there's not like that. And then, I mean, yeah, you can watch other people, but you're trying not to copy them. But it's almost the best. And I think I've discussed it here before that you kind of you kind of have to watch other people. There's something that speaks to you, and then you try that. Mm-hmm. But then this doesn't work from them, so you don't use that. You use what did work, and then you end up coming from other people like all of those right and then you kind of take what works for you and then it creates who you're supposed to be not copying them but right. like kind of like different seeds and I've tried all of these tried to look f- and find all of these different courses and <coughs> I don't I don't know I think it's <coughs> different for everyone else and basically what started this with the paper notes <coughs> was the first week, uh, like I, I came up and I said, I felt I, I didn't I didn't know mm-hmm. how where where to go. I didn't I didn't I knew kind of where God was leading me and kind of what He wanted to say, but it was kind of like because I've talked I've talked on it here, I've talked with you, I've talked with Kelsey. Everybody knows I hate looking at the iPad. I just I, I don't want to do that. I want to engage with the people. So it was like I, I wrote six thousand words out and then I didn't look at it. I was like, okay, well, whatever. And then uh, it was just like, man, just just write some stuff that you can preach from your heart mm-hmm. and trust God. Yep. And I was like, okay. Well, it's beginning to work for you. And to see it. I found that this is much, much better for me. I don't know if that would work for everyone else. And not there's anything wrong it with would. the script. But for me, Fine, you're it's just, it, it's easier and it feels more real. It's more from the heart. And it's also just this big, I don't know, it's like a big faith thing with me. Just knowing that God will meet me here. He, the Holy Spirit is going to meet me here. He's going to use his voice through me. And I just, I literally just bank everything right. on that. Psalms 8110, it was a, a young man, or <coughs> no, an older man that gave me that years ago when I was talking about how to do all this. And he said, Psalms 8110 will take you along the, a long way. Open your mouth and I will fill it. And you just make yourself available. Those of you that are watching, those of you that have shared your preachers, thank you for that. <coughs> if you had a favorite quote in the sermon, please do that. If you joined us somewhere after we started, Jared's throat's not feeling well, so I'm talking a little <laughs> bit more than normal. So if you have a favorite quote from that, throw it in there. What did the sermon speak to you? Um, one of the things that it spoke to me is that, and this is this the season that I, that I believe we're in right now, is that God is calling to himself people who have made up their mind. Mm. He's calling to himself people in this season that is just so chaotic and so messed up. People who have made up their mind because the fact of the business is that if you have not made up your mind, you're already falling behind. Oh, yeah. To follow me, to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow him in this season, that's, that's, that's the cure-all for relapsing. When you go all in, and I, and I don't know if you use that term, but somebody, Tanya did. I saw Tanya throw that term in, in our chat. Yeah, she said, all in. when you go all in, it makes all the difference in the world. So yeah. I think that's one of the problems with so many people in contemporary church and contemporary Christianity. You said it. We come to church. We like the lights. We like the sound. We like the songs. We like the feelings. And I want you to talk about that for a minute. The feelings. You you really grinded that for a little while about the difference between our feelings and our faith. But when the feelings wear off, what have you got? Because we we we, we want to quote the Bible. Uh, you know, we walk by faith, not by sight. But in reality, most of the time, we're walking by feelings. People behind me were saying, <coughs> "Mm-hmm." Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, you look at it. Uh, at least in this building, not other places, but all of the things that we hold back from God and hold back uh, on God with because of our feelings. Uh, starting with something as Come simple on. as it's Sunday morning, I don't feel good, 
you know, I easily I was like, hey, I'm getting sick. I could, you know, hey, Call you me. take this week and bump. But I was like, no, I, I started a series called Committed. I'm going to be committed. <laughs> and I was like, the devil, the devil is not going to shut me up. Period. That was that was my whole thing. Was I'm not the devil's not stopping me. Same thing with this Sunday. I I might feel worse. I might Let's feel go. Better. I'll wheel you in here I in a wheelchair. Know, I'm not backing down because that's exactly what he wants. He wants me Come to on. shut up. Because then we don't know what we're going to hear out of your mouth. Mm-hmm. Who, me? Yeah, I was just joking. Oh, I'm not great. <laughs> but <laughs> something as simple as it's Sunday morning. I woke up late. The yeah. kids are going crazy. I spilled. I, I dropped a bowl of cereal on the ground. Let's just forget Everything it. going on against this. You know, screw I'm this. Frustrated. Let's watch it online. And then you turn it on. Great. Nothing wrong with the online audience. Mm-hmm. But... You have to, I feel like with the online audience, you have to be very intentional about it. Yes, sir. Because you are in a comfortable environment. You're at your house. It's very easy to turn it on, oh, watch for a few browse minutes. Browse your phone. Walk away. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, nowadays, because you can play it in the background and be scrolling whatever else on your phone. So it's, you have to be very intentional mm-hmm. about your desire for the Lord, your devotion to the Lord, and just... Well, we see it Focusing here. On People, that. you'll see them in church for a couple of weeks, and then they're out for like four weeks, and then yeah. they're back in, and then they're out for several weeks, and then they're back in. If we could, you know, we have a congregation that's almost like 50-50. If we could get everybody to commit to even just that, showing up on Sunday, we would fill this building and over overflow rooms twice. Oh, yeah. The people that, you know, say, what well, you know. Well, that's what I was saying. I like, didn't feel it this week. We all know more than one person. If everyone invited... Use your a social media. People, Send and an only invitation. one person came, but like that, our feelings. Yeah. Well, I'm not. I'm not going to post something on social media because I don't want any drama. I don't want. Her I don't nice want. Feelings. I don't want to look like smoke and mirrors. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to. You know. I don't want to post. I don't want to post this scripture and someone ask me what does that mean yeah. type of thing or you know I don't know. And then the other side of it is your like feelings, just all up your, in your feelings. feelings. Like we, we have no problem with. Going out to the bar on a Friday or a Saturday and posting those on our social media as we're out drinking and dancing and doing Looking whatever. Stupid. But as soon as it comes to God, eh, I don't know. Football games. Football games will comment on everything under the sun. You go on the St. Augustine News Facebook thing and they'll talk about whatever and get in arguments. But then we sit here and we're like, hey, we need you guys to share mm-hmm. our YouTube videos. Get on there and like and comment it. Uh, and you look at our YouTube and there's like two comments per video. One's me, one's you. Yeah. And it's like, guys, we're, we're trying to get the gospel of Jesus out. This, this is important, but there's so much that attacks our feelings. You said that they that won't we don't want sing to in church because I don't want yeah. anybody to hear me sing. I don't, I don't, as if God cares how your voice sounds. Sing it. Let sing it fly. It. Sing it. Let it fly. To, you know, not raising our hands, but we'll raise it for anything else. Touchdown. <coughs> in our house. We'll be in the house and, woo, you know, touchdown, home mm-hmm. run, whatever. Yeah, this is awesome. Come in, in to worship our creator and it's like white knuckle on the back of the seat. Don't look around. Everybody's looking mad. It's like, what are we doing? Well, you've said we're going to change that culture. I'm working on it. And I'll keep, it might <laughs> enter the building, but I will keep pointing it out and saying something because that's not the culture that, that I envision for this church. I mean, yeah. it's. Come on. What do you think we're going to do in heaven? Stand there? Right. And I think people are much <laughs> more comfortable when there is movement and when there is yeah. n- noise. And I'm seeing it now. More and more people in your sermons are talking back to you. Yep. Actually, like you say, <laughs> helping you preach. I mean, I, there's ladies here on the second, third, and fourth row that are just preaching back at you while you... Perfect. <laughs> it's like, Keep come it on. Up. Get louder. Thank Make you, people. Amber, bringing a neighbor with you on Sunday. Thank you. Yeah, That's that. what that was going like, to require. Uh, the Angela said mm-hmm. how she was on the back row and yeah. nobody was clapping. Nobody was saying anything back on that one message. And as they watched her do it, they started doing it. And then it got to the point that... They did it without her even starting it. And it's just, man, the, the, the way that you can change people, mm-hmm. just something change as simple that as culture. that and changing the culture. And I, I, that's just my thing. Like we come in and not necessarily just here, but church in general, and you go to churches and it's just like mediocre worship, mediocre mm-hmm. sermons where they spend seven minutes before they get You're whatever right. Bible scripture they're going to get in. So then you got 20 minutes of, mm-hmm. and then... You know, we're, we're just sitting there, we're just bored out of our minds, but because it's the South, it's the thing to do. Mm-hmm. And it's like, what, what, what do y'all think we're doing in heaven for all of eternity? Okay. We're going to be praying, praising, worshiping God, and mm-hmm. why Jerry, not start here? Jerry said some can't be there every week for important reasons, too. You were exactly <coughs> right. Some people have work, some people, they're, they're staying with their other family members. 
some people are ill and they can't make it. We get yeah. that. That's why our live stream is so important to us. That's well, and that's what I'm saying about being intentional with your live streaming. Yep. Turning things off in the background and staying focused as if you were here, uh, and and bringing what you would do here into your house as well, because yep. uh, that would be your place of worship. That would be because we are the church, uh, the people. It's not just the building. So when you're home and you're watching something. If you're dancing with the music and singing and, ra and, and raising your hands in worship and praising and even talking back to the screen as the preacher is making a good point, that's still worship. Can I, can I, can I, can I give a shout out <coughs> to Diane Armstrong? Yeah. Speaking of that, y'all, the girl on the keyboard, y'all need to encourage Diane and she jumped shake up her hand and it. give her a high five. She is as white as grits. And Sunday, she was she Whoa. stayed on the organ behind Jared to just add a little something, a little a little extra. And I, she was appropriate. She was good. She, she would she do it. Me and she would smile, and I'd like, come on. And she that almost every time she'd hit it, she'd look <laughs> over at me and, and smile. And I'm like, good girl, go it, go it. I love it. It I, adds so a we're whole stirring different the atmosphere. element. And we're to gonna, me, because they were asking um, <clears throat> her and Jessica, and I was like, to me, that is. That, that's their instrument. That's their gift that God put in them to worship with. So mm -hmm. it, that use was it. like, use it. Because she was like, how, how do you want me to do it? I was like, if, if, if you were going to shout or clap, that's when you would play that. That's your own way of doing yeah. that kind of thing. And it's, I don't know. I love it. Well, what we're, <coughs> what you, I think where you're going with this sermon and, and just trying to drive it home because you sound like you're about to die over there. Probably. Uh, changing the culture in our row and in church can turn into changing the culture everywhere you go. You're, you're right, Brooke. Keep it up. Um, to me, it reminded me of the old song that we used to sing in church, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. No turning back. This whole sermon that you did, the entire, uh, however long it was, hour and 20 minutes, whatever, on relapse, um, spoke forcefully to me. It really had me thinking, too, sitting on the front row about times in my life when I've kind of kicked it in neutral and when I've, I haven't relapsed, I haven't gone back to, and I haven't made those alliances, but you just kind of kick it in neutral and you lose yeah. that sense of drive it's easy and passion. To, and then, you know, oh, I missed my Bible reading today. Yeah. You know, God still loves me, yes, but... Then it becomes the I next keep day. Fire burning. I and then it keep becomes it the next day, and the next thing you know, you haven't read it in three weeks mm -hmm. because you skipped it's a few important. days, and that became your habit. Keep that fire burning. There was a moment too in that sermon, and I, Kelsey made it a real. Uh, you, you you went like the Hulk. It's down in your soul like a fire. I didn't see that. I'll have to. It excited <laughs> me. It was like because I think that's what it's going to take to stir the body up. Because we were talking about it about volunteers in our church. If we can just throw this out there in the family room, um, we are always in a struggle to get people to volunteer and serve in yeah. our church. And we, you know, we're always wondering why. <laughs> yeah, hashtag Wendy on the base. We're always wondering why. Here it is. I think in this church we have such a strong pulpit. And the sermons that I've delivered and for years and now that Jared has delivered for the last year are, are so full of content that people want to be in the room. They want to be in the house and sit and listen and hear that. They don't want to miss a sermon. Yeah. Other churches, that, and, and no stones to be thrown, but I mean, the content, you, you said this guy preached a, a less than a 20-minute sermon. And it's just yeah. kind of mediocre, uh, you know, like a mediocre uh, motivational speaker. And that's, that's not... very motivating. That might be what y'all <laughs> are, are into, but that's not what we're into. We're into the Word of God. Jared's been doing it an, an, over an hour in sermons. Um, at first, I struggled with that also. But then now I see it's an hour in the Word. It's an hour in God's Word during the week that we need on Sunday. That's so what, I, that's I what set me off it. when I was watching that video was... It was, and, I, and I'm not going to say, because it no could have been an off week, no you know, I, I checked one message, I didn't, even, I didn't make it all the way through, because it just, it wasn't my flavor, that yeah. doesn't mean it's not someone else's, but to me, you've got a 27 minute video, and seven minutes of it is you just talking about nothing, mm -hmm. and then you're like, okay, here's the Bible verse, and then there was another like couple minutes, and I'm like... Where's the word? Because now we're getting, you know, you're like, okay, neat. Well, here's the word. I'm all for an intro. I got to sneeze. But yeah, preach that. Preach the word. It's like, to, that's what immediately spoke in my spirit. I'm like, we're now going to have 20 minutes. If that, mm -hmm. that's if you spent the entire 20 minutes on just the scripture of the word of God. 20 minutes after going seven, six, 168 you know, six, seven days. hours. 
168 in hours, week. and now you're going to get 20, 20 minutes. minutes. That's just, it's not enough so to me. Not enough. And not I know I'm going you. long, and I said Sunday, you know, <laughs> I'm going to stick to the hour. I promise, um, I'm going to be an hour. Well, the thing, and I did, I mean, luckily I dialed it back, because I could have kept going. But <laughs> but the thing was, there was like seven or three, there was three minutes, and I looked down, <coughs> and I was like, I can cut all of this. And I can end in three minutes, mm-hmm. but it won't it won't land correctly because mm-hmm. I knew I still wanted to get to to Peter mm-hmm. and how Jesus knew he was going to reject him. I was like, that has to be that has to be my landing point. So I, I and I didn't know I took an extra twenty you know minutes on top of that. But mm-hmm. so my thing is I'm. I'm it's weird to say. It's like you're preparing way too much, mm-hmm. and then you're trying to figure out what God wants to say. So. I, uh, you know, I, I'm working on it. I'm, I'm glad that the majority of the church, from what I hear, is hungry enough that they're not worried about the time. Seems like it. Um, yeah, I haven't. I've gotten overwhelmingly positive responses, and that's typically because the negative responses will not get sent to They'll your face. They'll behind yeah. everybody else. So whatever. Uh, but it's going to be all right. You just keep it up because it's the Word of God and it's the, the culture that you want to develop. Um, to get people into the word, and I think it'll it'll eventually what it'll do is it'll create a stronger body, and it will create people that are. We understand when we come into the sanctuary, we're going to be here for an hour. We're going to be here to hear the word in that sermon for an hour. I, I mean, that's me. Like you're you're going 168 hours, and right. it's, let's just say you do devotional time, whatever. But there's still 168 hours without, generally without, being connected with this with the body. Yeah. And then on top of that, the minute, like Kelsey, as soon as you get out of these doors, the world's smacking you back in the face. Yeah. And Monday's still there. And you still got to go to work and you still got to deal with people that you don't like or anything like that. And it's like, is it is it doing a justice to give these people just the bare minimum so we can fill seats instead of feed souls? You write that down. Put that on a shirt. Is it more important to fill seats I want or to feed, feed souls? people. I want to. That's been my prayer a lot for the last go like, week is... I'm ready to see the lost mm-hmm. come and just be saved. And, like, I, that's just the thing. Like, man. Make it an all-day Sunday. Uh, well, well I, and Sunday, we we'll, have, we'll come in here, do the sermon, we'll go eat lunch, and we'll come back in here, and you can go well, out again. I, I mean, we're going to do it for all of eternity. There's no breaks. So, <laughs> uh, you know, but it's like, and I'm trying, again, I'm trying to give... It's because it, I'm such a perfectionist, so I'm like, this is way too long. I need to hurry up and figure this out. But I'm trying to also learn to give myself grace with, mm-hmm. you know, I haven't preached an entire. Oh, and I do want to say, whoever said September 17th was correct, I kept saying the 18th. That's oh. because that's when I uploaded it, but it was preached on the 17th. Oh. I didn't get that. So <laughs> shout out to whoever that was. I'll go ahead and back down from. Was it uh, me? I don't care. Well, I was making a joke about it and trying to say like I knew it. So oh. I don't want it to come off that like, you know, I'm like some self-righteous know But you know, there's a lot of people sitting in the room and you can see that they're <laughs> commenting now that, and it's not everybody. You're exactly right. It's not everybody. Um, the, the culture that we've created in contemporary Christianity in America, not, not everywhere else, but in the Western culture, is Christian-ish. Um, we like that convenience. We like the quick in, quick out, the ADD kind of short attention span, hit it quick and get out. And, and then we've, got, we've done it. But you know, that's not developing strong, vibrant, deep, all that rooted is, Christians. And so we've got to try something else. I think all that is is just we're so self-centered as a culture that... That to mm-hmm. me is just screaming, uh, You're making up my the time. gospel, making the gospel about us. Yeah. Instead of coming in and and hearing and and worshiping the reverence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we've made it to just hurry up and get this done so we can get out of here, Amen. go get something to eat, and go back home and watch the games. And it's like, dude, there's yeah. so why much we in such a hurry? more than that. Make it, yeah, Matt. Why church just one day? You're right. <coughs> my soul feels there's alive. So after. much more. There's so, so much more. That's the culture that we're going to develop here. So you guys pray that everyone else will get it because not everyone else is going to feel exactly that. But that's the culture that Jared and Kelsey want to create here. And I'm behind it now, 100. percent We should just feed souls and. Feed don't souls feel, and don't, don't fill about seats. Fill seats. Souls. And we're, we're too worried do, about filling we're seats do both. instead of feeding souls. I want people full. That's why I bring. So, and it's funny, too. I was telling Kelsey, I was like, I spend all week studying and studying and studying. And I write stuff down. And it's like, I don't know how you are, but I'm like there. I'm like, man, is this enough? How am I going to preach an hour off of just this? And then you step up and you're like, oh, I almost went two hours. And I barely hit the first verse. Like, <laughs> 
The ports of just being full, but I am trying to dial it back to an hour just to be mindful of time. But I'm never going to go. Well, we were talking about incredibly you were talking short. About doing like a revival night or I something. I do. Like I do want to do a revival where, where we just we take the breaks off. Take no breaks. No breaks. No breaks. No time limit. We'll come in. I don't know six, seven o'clock, and just go sing some worship music, and just I want to. What do y'all think? Preach and then not worry about the if time. If we do a revival night, what would y'all prefer? If just while the crowd we've got sitting in here still with us, um, what night? Friday night. Friday. Friday fire. Friday I think fire. Is what the day I heard. We'll just hit it. We'll come in. Maybe we'll even have some food here. Y'all can come in. We'll have some little fellowship. Priest sing and just have an old fashioned church. Service. I think it'd be great. I think it would be great. And and. If you made it, I don't know, more than... I don't want to go, like, once a month, because then it's just... Scheduled. Yeah, like, I don't want to schedule. I just want it to be Amen. a thing that we just pop up and we do it, and it would be cool. And I said this, I think, last week, like, calling out other churches, like, let's work together, let's collaborate. I would love to get other people involved. Mm-hmm. But I, I have no idea if they watch this, but, I mean, that's that's my thing. We're, we're on the same team, Uh but we're all trying to hopefully try to do the same thing and lead the lost Amen. to Jesus. But let's wrap it up. That's my thing. Is you got just twelve seconds. Let's take the. <coughs> we've already gone over. Uh, we'll take the breaks <laughs> off and do just just no time limit. Let's just go and just oh, just be in God's Word and God's present. I think that'd be great. I was also trying to stall because that's uh, a minute and a half behind us. So you ask the yeah. question and I got to wait for them to answer. Well, it's a good thing. Um, Sunday. Sunday, part three, week three, episode, episode three. three. But yeah, I got to get that into my head. Uh, this week, committed, episode three, I'm going to do rejection. Re- what? Rejection. Oh, snap. Y'all share that. Rejection. Uh, now, can, because where, where are you going with that? I didn't get into it with Micaiah, mm-hmm. how they rejected his work. Oh, there you go. He's the rejected prophet. Uh, the same thing. It's, it's almost, uh, just to give you some insight, and I don't know if I'll bring this up Sunday, but he's kind of like a, a foretelling of the same situation of Jesus where he comes up and tells people stuff. Yep. They both yep. get hit on the cheek and they both get rejected. Jesus gets murdered, Come obviously, on. and he's raised up. So uh, Sunday will be rejection. Um, the importance of... That's going to be good. God's, God's Because commands. everyone's felt that. Everyone's felt that. And one of the things that we work hard to, to avoid is rejection. <coughs> yeah. But he was despised rejection. and rejected As of Kelsey. men. Uh, that sounded weird, but it didn't mean anything crazy by it. But I just, oh. I, there's something in us. We want to be liked. We want to be loved. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know if I'll harp in it in that sense of rejection, but just the idea of, you know, building on the first three weeks. You, you started out good, you fell back, and now you're rejecting it again, and you're trying to kind of go your own way. Mm-hmm. Rejecting, you're rejecting the, the word of the Lord, and then we see. Hopefully I finish this, and then the next week, uh, move into chapter 19. I think I can do that all in one week, because that's a shorter chapter, and that would be uh, rebuke and revival. Friday fire. It looks like Friday's the night. Friday fire. I would love it. We're going to try and wrap it tonight. If you joined us (coughs) after the beginning, tomorrow, if you're watching this live, tomorrow night is Dining with Dignity at 530 on Granada Street downtown. Uh, If you'd like to serve, I'm sure Jim and Kathy Lubinsky would love to have you just show up there at around 530-ish, 515, 530. They would love to have you do that. Don't forget that we've got a lot of great things coming up. We don't want you to miss anything. But for Sunday, let me just invite you all to change the routine. Uh, When you see our social media stuff, share it, if you will. Just take the time to share it or comment. Go to our YouTube page, comment on that because it kicks the algorithm. (laughs) And then, if you will... um, Consider inviting somebody for Sunday, and then come early. Um, don't wait until 10 o'clock to walk in the room. Come here at about 9.45, 940. Walk in, have a seat, have some fellowship, talk sit with people. Sit to the front. Let me see your face. Sit to the front. Out. Move to the front. Fill the front seats in first. Uh, we're trying to change the culture, and it just week after week after week, we're seeing it livening up, and we're seeing that happen, but we want to see it happen more. I know it's yeah. Jared's heart to get that done, so let's go after that and get that done. Don't miss Sunday. This is going to be on rejection. I hope Kelsey's got a great graphic that we can share on that. I'm sure she <laughs> will. Sure she will. Because we It'll need be that. her, like, putting her hand up in my face. Rejection. Y'all keep praying about what's going on with our the purchase of our land. Uh, we said at the beginning tonight, we told everybody that we are all set. We are closing on September the 23rd. 
it will be ours. We own it. And then all we have to do is get the project planned out and worked out. Uh, pray for them, Jared and Kelsey, and I guess they're going to develop a team of people that are going to develop an entire complex out there. 1600 seat sanctuary is the ish plan with, with expandable. Uh, children's areas, play areas inside and outside. Activities planned throughout the week. Uh, just a, a, an, an entire complex. Yeah, I think it'd be Very great. Very excited about it. You don't like it when I give too many details, so I'm not going to give details. <laughs> but it's going to be pretty exciting. It'll be good. Uh, with us. that, we love you guys. Have a great rest of the week. Come Sunday. Come early. Move up. Invite 17 people. Yes. And uh, we'll see you then. Let's go. Hey, I hope that message spoke to you today. I want to say thank you to everybody who is involved at Family Church and those who help support this ministry. If you would like to get more involved, you can click the link in the description or head to our website, familychurch.social. We would love to connect with you, and you can find all of our social media platforms on our website. Also, if this message spoke to you in any way today and you liked it, consider sharing it on your social media in any way that you would like so that we can help reach those far from God and return them to the arms of the Father. We want to see God work through you. We love you. Thanks again for listening. God bless you.